Thanks very much, Gabby. Well, my, my presence here this morning is something of a swan song. Uh, I have uh, been moved back into the corporate energy role of the city, so I'm no longer dealing with community energy. Um, in, the, um, uh, in the second Hobbit movie, there's a scene where Bilbo climbs up to the top of this tree and, and uh, in, in Mirkwood Forest, and off in the distance, you can see the Lonely Mountain. And for one brief shining moment, he can see his objective, he can see the, the landscape, he knows he's actually closer than he imagined he would be, and then he has to climb back down the tree to contend with hostile evil spiders and uh, evil woodland elves. So I'm heading back to deal with the spiders and elves now, uh, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our community energy plan here in Guelph and where we're going with, um, uh, with implementation. So uh, just a little bit of a background on our plan. Uh, our plan has as bookends the, uh, the planning period for places to grow. So it starts in 2006, ends in 2031. Uh, Guelph is expected to grow in population by 50% over that period. So our plan calls for a 50% per capita reduction in greenhouse gas in energy consumption over that period, and 60% reduction in greenhouse gases over the same period. So that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, aspirationally where we're going. So um, with respect to how we're going to get there, our task is to use less energy, to make more of our own, and to use our energy smarter. I think of it as a little bit like um, if you go to the doctor and they tell you that you're, uh, you're a little heavier than you need to be, well, what actions do you need to take? Well, you've got to eat less, uh, you have to exercise more, and you have to eat more wisely. So it's the same sort of thing, really. Um, so using less means uh, higher energy efficiency, um, emulating some of the things we see happening overseas in, in Germany, for example, where the amount of energy they require for producing a unit of economic output is half of what we require. Um, Making more of our own is about distributed generation. It's about uh, combined heat and power. It's about rooftop solar. Um, and then using it smarter is bringing together the electricity grid and the, the thermal grid if there is one or if there's going to be one. So taking a closer look at the way you use heat in the city and looking at the fact that there is really a, a, an intimate relationship between heat and electricity. So there's barriers, of course, to this. So uh, if, if as one, one of the... Um, the challenges I see is that the, uh, the Ministry of Environment's program is called a Municipal Energy Plan Program. And it's interesting to me that they don't use the term Community Energy Plan Program. Uh, Guelph's program is a Community Energy Plan, and most of the plans that I see are. Um, if it's a municipal plan, it's going to face a lot of barriers, and these are three. Uh, resources is the first one. Municipalities just don't have a lot of money to throw at these problems, they don't have a lot of people to throw at these problems. So that's going to be a barrier because it takes money, it takes people to get these things done. Um, municipalities are not fabulously agile the way that, say, a fly ball dog is. So um, it takes a long time for decisions to get made. It takes a long time to align resources against particular objectives. So by contrast, if you look at what happens in the, in the private sector, I actually came from the private sector and then they started the municipal government about years ago. And um, I was astounded at how much faster things happen in, in the private sector, where you just make a decision and it just happens. You, you know, align resources against an objective. And in the municipal area, it takes a lot longer to get everybody on the same page, to get resources, and a, a great idea comes along. And if it happens in January, it's really disheartening, because you know that the next opportunity that you're going to have to make that idea happen, happen is after you've gone through budget season and the next, next fiscal year starts. And then you've got some money to actually throw at that problem. So uh, agility is another issue. And then flexibility is a, is a third problem. So once again, in the municipal sector, you often deal with challenges of um, well, long-term relationships, for example. Uh, bonusing is a barrier. Uh, so you, you can't simply decide that you're going to partner with, say, a district energy piping company um, for a long-term purchase of district energy pipe because that's not allowed under procurement rules. So that can be a real barrier as well to uh, achieving plans that have 20, 30, even 40 year horizons. So what are the solutions? Well, the solutions are partnerships. Um, reaching out to the community and finding what are the environmental NGOs that are out there that are looking to accomplish some of the same goals that your community energy plan goals are. So Gabby before was talking about um, the the London experience with the amount of, of money that is spent on energy and the amount of that money that leaves the community. Um, it, it was interesting to me that uh, in, in Guelph I was having a conversation with the, I think he was actually the former chair of the Chamber of Commerce, and he said, yeah, you know, half a billion dollars a year leaves Guelph to, to pay for the energy that we use. And 
and, uh, and we really should, should keep more of that money local. And I realized that he was repeating back to me a mantra that had been part of our community energy plan uh, mantra for a very, very long time. So I'm hearing reflected back to me uh, that the same words that uh, our, our team has been pushing out there for, for years. So that's, that's a good sign. It, it, it shows that people are listening, people are observing it, and people are, are integrating that into their, their view of the world and the community. So um, environmental NGOs are another example where they're, they're looking to change the world. They're looking to, um, uh, to reduce water consumption, reduce energy consumption, have more local, local food production, uh, to um, reduce the amount of waste that's used, to have smarter transportation decisions. So uh, it turns out that a lot of those things are very aligned with the community energy plan. Even if you're, like, as, as was pointed out by, by, by Gabby earlier, if you start from the perspective of sustainability, it's, it's, a, it's a small tent issue. There's a few people that are interested, but not necessarily everyone. In fact, not, a, not even necessarily a majority. But if you start talking about money, well, everybody's got a wallet of some description. Some of them have fatter wallets than others. And so when the conversation is about money, if it's about money leaving the community, if it's about money that could stay in the community if we did things differently, that completely changes the conversation. So you can get the Chamber of Commerce as a partner because businesses are interested in really two things, spending less money to make their business work and earning more money from sales. So if you can find ways for businesses to accomplish either or both of those objectives, they'll be on your side. With ENGOs, if you can find ways to give them the tools and the resources to help make things happen on water, transportation, waste, energy, and food, they're going to be on your side. And with the, with the utility, again, with conservation demand management planning, they've got an objective, they've got a mission, they've got a, an obligation that's been put in front of them. If you partner with them, you can help accomplish that. The other thing that will start happening is that this doesn't have to be a hub and spoke relationship. With city, city Hall is at the center, and all these partner groups are out of the periphery. What you start seeing is mesh networks start to form. So our our um, environmental NGO, Emerge Wealth, has a relationship with the utility to deliver their conservation demand management programming. They're out there delivering the, uh, the conservation kits. It used to be compact fluorescent bulbs. Now they've got this whiz bang uh, tablet application where they walk through people's homes and do an inventory of all the light bulbs and how long they're used, and they come up with a uh, an on-the-spot plan for, for replacing your light bulbs with LEDs and how much money you can save and how quick your, quick your payback is. So it's pretty slick and uh, that's got some attention from our LDC as well. Um, and then if we look at the Chamber of Commerce and uh, our, our uh, uh, environmental NGO, they actually co-located. So our, um, our our ENGO, before they got some space in a local, local uh, uh, shopping complex, they were located inside the Chamber of Commerce and that's where we did all our meetings. So, there are these interconnections that are mutually reinforcing and help move towards the same goal. So uh, the bottom line is a community energy plan is it's not that complicated. It's about using less energy. It's about using it smarter. And it's about making more of your own. Um, municipalities face significant barriers if they, if they insist on going in alone. If you turn a municipal energy plan into a community energy plan and you partner with nonprofits, local business, and the local utility, you can achieve so much more than you ever could strictly by looking at it from City Hall. That's all I have to say about that. Great, thank you. Questions for Alex? Yeah. There was a hand up back there, sorry. Yeah, go how ahead. Did you, did you get your water? How do we deal with the water issue? Like I was thinking, as you said, they go into the home count light bulb. We used to have it where they you do, you know, enter campaign for a home audit so that it oh, if we just get the low hanging fruit and we don't deal with that heat track is old, why don't you buy a new one? We'll be able to money and so we'll give you nine hundred and fifty bucks. Like I think if we, we should engage it with an, an opportunity to get in front of somebody, it should be broader than just LED light bulbs. Yeah, well certainly I'm not being negative, but yeah, negative. Well, that's just one element of the efficient home business. Program that, uh, that so they do other things. So yeah, as I mentioned, food, water, waste, transportation, oh, okay. and oh. energy. So those are all part of the, the conversation when uh, when members of the community are engaged through any of the four pathway programs that Emerge Wealth has. So when they do a walk through the house, I, I, I should have mentioned this because we've had a bit of an electricity emphasis in the conversation this morning. Uh, our water services department is, is another partner organization with Emerge Wealth. 
they deliver low flow shower heads and, and sink uh, faucet aerators, and they engage in a conversation about things like um, the, the, the challenges with hardscaping and the effect that that has on stormwater, uh, about opportunities for rainwater harvesting and for putting a rain barrel uh, on your downspout. Uh, so those are all parts of the conversation. And uh, uh, so again, much in the same way that there is a cross linkage between our electricity utility and emerging wealth and our business community, the same thing happens with water services. I'm going to ask you a hard question and I ask the other two just because we've been through a lot of this. Is there any evaluation built into these plans so you can understand how successful you are? Because Julia was talking earlier about putting some boundaries around your aspirational plan and how much you can actually deliver. So have you linked that in? Yeah, in fact, our uh, um, our plan includes the requirement for, for reporting. So uh, we, we produce a, um, actually it, it, it goes under the banner of Gulf Hydro and uh, uh, its unregulated sister company, Vita, which in fact was created as, as a tool to implement our community energy plan, our uh, community energy initiative. Um, the, um, uh, I lost my train of thought here. So, so, the, so we, we, produced, we produced a, um, Greenhouse gas and energy uh, inventory progress plan in 2012 was um, It was we covered the 2012 year, and we're in the process of producing another one now. Uh, so it's, it's a challenge, and, and the thing is that um, in, in the early days, it's been really great because we actually were able to kind of, to some extent, ride on the coattails of some of the um, the improvements that have happened in the province because of slaying old King Cole. Um, but the fact is we're now at the point now where, where we really have to, to buckle down and get some, some real uh, community-centric uh, improvements happening. And, and it, it is happening, it's moving ahead, again, with the, with the, the help of the, the uh, work that our environmental NGO is doing, reaching out to individual households and having conversations about, uh, about how to use less water, uh, use less energy, and so forth. So that is manif manifesting itself in the, the numbers we're seeing. We are reporting that on reporting on that number basis. I, I just wanted to mention also too, like um, we've had the conversation because it has led to some confusion with regards to the MEP program that the Ministry of Energy is putting out there and community energy planning. And one of the things that we've been mentioning is um, I was I asked Brian, I was like, uh, why did you do that? Why did you call it ME like municipal energy plan? Because now it's kind of like you have to separate it between the corporation of the municipality and what they can do versus what the whole stakeholder group. And it actually was the reason that they did that was because it, uh, th when they were doing the analysis of it, they were getting a lot of, um, they were getting a lot of uh, questions from the community about whether they would be eligible for the funding. And they wanted to make it clear that the funding was geared, that it needed to go to the municipalities because the municipalities are so integral to making sure that these community plans work. But they put requirements within the community energy planning framework for the, for the funds that required that it needed to be a community energy plan, even though it's called a municipal energy plan. So I know it's a bit confusing because I've had that conversation a number of times. That's an excellent point. I mean, how many people participated in the uh, Sustainable Cities Collective uh, um, webinar yesterday on making cities 100% renewable? Who can do that? So th this is, I, I, I saw this here up on, in my email and I thought, wow, that sounds great. I gotta, gotta watch that. And there's some really fantastic things going on in, well, Vancouver made the commitment that they're gonna be 100% renewable. And there's all kinds of fabulous things happening across the province there. Um, Barcelona is another example, Frankfurt is another. But um, the thing about uh, my, my enthusiasm for what was happening in, in British Columbia was tempered when I learned that when they were talking about these fabulous plans where all these municipalities are now stepping up and have plans to go uh, net zero. And in fact, a lot of them have actually already accomplished that, principally through uh, purchasing a lot of offsets and that sort of thing. When they're talking about their, their, their municipality being net zero, they're actually talking about the municipality as a corporation. So once I heard that, I thought, oh, so it's not the community, it's the municipality. Because, because when I heard that at first, I thought, wow, they, they solved the problem already. We're already there in BC, so we just have to do what they did. A little bit longer uh, road to hoe there than I thought. But um, it's a good start. And I'm encouraged as I move back into the corporate energy world that there, there are a lot of the usual suspects that are in this room and are part of this community that are also working on the corporate side of things, too. If we do things right there, we will be setting a good example for business community and for uh, homeowners and so forth to be the same. Great. Any last questions for Alex? No? Thank you.
Thank you very much, Alison.